Hey everyone, thank you for joining me. This video marks the start of the plumbing. I'm going to start with the waste lines and then move on to the water lines. I'm going to start all this work here in the kitchen. The first thing I'm going to do is get the rough end for the uh, toilet and the vanity and the little half bath that's in the kitchen and then tie that in under the floor uh, that's in the basement. Then I need to probably I'm going to cut the plumbing off right here and then from there up it's going to be all new replacing that T there and tying in the vanity and then the bathtub from this side. I'm not going to go into absolutely every detail because it would take me forever but uh, I'll mention a few things. For the start with the toilet flange, that's the toilet flange that goes through a hole in the floor, gets screwed down and then the toilet mounts to this with the flange bolts. So for a toilet flange it is uh, 12, inches on, uh, 12 inches on center from the back wall and 15 inches minimum from any objects to the left or right. So I don't have drywall, so I need to say it's 12 and a half. So that's 12 and a half. And then minimally 15 and a half. Nailed the line. So that is the center of my hole. Um, so this, I can just say I want a four inch hole because it's going to be a, let's see, what do I want? Eh, we'll do four and a quarter inch hole, so two and an eighth. Let me just do it this way. Let me just lay that down. I'm just going to get this centered and then I'll trace around it and add a little. So now I'm going to drill a hole and then cut this out with a jigsaw. You could also use a hole saw. For all your hole drilling needs, electrical, plumbing, if you can get yourself some of these Irwin speed bore bits, they work extremely good. Um, it has an auger type bit on the end tip so it pulls through the cut. It is much better than a paddle bit. Super fast. Sadly, my chuck on my drill is messed up right now, so I'm having to use my corded drill and other corded tools. Eventually, I'd like to have all cordless battery stuff. All right, so that hole was just a tracing of the outside of this, so to give myself a little leeway for adjustment left and right, um, which will help in the plumbing downstairs probably, or just slight adjustments. I'm going to cut about an eighth of an inch outside my traced line. And with these types of flanges, uh, a three inch pipe fits on the inside and a four inch pipe can fit on the outside. So this is the standard one that most people are going to use. I'm using three inch uh, waistlines, so my pipe will go on the inside. So you can see I've got a little bit of uh, leeway now, but there's still plenty enough for me to screw in, um, screw the flange down. You don't want to go too far out because you still have to use these holes right here for the screws. Um, and if you want a little extra reinforcement, I don't know if you can see them in the video, but I've got these blue lines. Those mark the joists, so you're going to need to make sure that you're putting your toilet in a clear spot or either you're going to have to box your framing around it. I'll probably still come back in maybe and put some cross pieces of 2x6s in here just to give a little extra support because I guess technically you are weakening it a little with the whole I'm using the, uh, what do you call this stuff, Advantec subflooring where I, I've replaced it here in the bathroom, so this stuff is... Wonderful stuff, especially for applications like bathrooms, but any subfloor really. But once I get this screwed down, I'm going to go underneath and get everything connected downstairs. 
One last thing to note is the position of these holes you see here. That for the flange bolts to go down and then slide over. So it's sort of like a little keyway, I guess you could call it. Um, so those flange bolts are what holds the toilet down to the floor. So you can imagine those are going to end up square because they're basically on that same 12, 12 inch center off the finish wall. Um, so you want to adjust your flange toward the ends of the slots because those bolts drop in and then go like this and that's when they catch on that part there. So you can imagine if it's just like this, then your toilet's not going to be able to mount. So you need to turn it to where a parallel reference line off of this wall here. You can see now it's wrong and then now it's about right. So you need to kind of do your measuring and get it all positioned and then screw it down. Alright, I'm going to go ahead and address the vanity real quick before I go downstairs. Makes a difference in all the plumbing. So this right here is the footprint of the pedestal sink. This blue line right there, if you can see it, is the center of the joist. So I've got to have that plumbing come up dead center, right where you don't want it to come up. Uh, but I think what I'm going to do is come up to the floor, then use probably some uh, 45s and kind of offset it over here. That way when the uh, drain comes down, you've got your trap. I can kind of offset it over to this point. Um, otherwise, you know, your trap always offsets it in some direction, but I can't put the drain back here. And if you see a little bit of the drain behind this pedestal sink, it's not going to be that big of a deal. Um, but so I've got to cut it dead center. And for that, I'm just going to use a hole saw. This is a Linux hole saw and the adapter piece. They thread on and this piece goes up and puts pins in the back. So these are, I think, the best hole saws that you can buy. They work great. The setup is real heavy duty, uh, but you do have to be careful with the hole saw I can grab, especially when you're using a powerful drill. So go ahead and get this taken care of. Hit right on that joist there, but I'll probably uh, kind of carve that joist out just a little bit to make the clearance. This hole is also two and five eighths. My drain line coming through there only needs to be an inch and a half. I could upsize it to two inches, but don't really need to in this situation. I had to do some off-camera figuring, some cutting and fitting, and so I've got some of this kind of figured out just to where I can keep things moving along pretty good. So this fitting right here, that goes up to the toilet. I'll have a clean out right here. That'll just, if anything happens in this short section of pipe, I can open that up and spray it out with a hose. Um, then I've got a sanitary T here. It goes up to, uh, on a two inch line. That's a vent for the toilet. And then I've got another sanity, sanitary T. It's kind of turned on its side, but angled up a little bit. And then that shoots back to this pipe, which is going to be the drain for the uh, vanity. And then that vanity is going to have a separate vent that goes up and connects into the main stack up in the uh, second floor at the vanity up there. So over here, this was the existing drain line. This comes down and through two elbows is going to shoot through this hole here. I was going to use the plumbing from this point out, but uh, they didn't have it quite right. So um, uh, these lines are going to come in and connect with a combination Y. Uh, so let's go ahead and go over to that other side of the hole and I'll show you what I'm working with. So here we are in the crawl space. This is the cast iron sewer line. That's where it goes down. This piece comes up, connects over where the washer and dryer is. They've just got this cap here busted open to vent the washer, so that means all the sewer gas is coming out in the crawl space under the porch, so that needs to be fixed. Then they've got this Y here. That comes up elbows over. And then from here, the plumbing from inside, the drain lines would come through here. It was an elbow. Then it came down. What they had, though, was this piece here. So they had a sanitary T, and then they had this bushing to a, uh, drop down to a one and a half inch pipe. 
So that means that all that stuff coming down this pipe could kind of cross over that T potentially and then cause some sort of a jam, which I don't like. So that I removed. And now what I'm going to do, and i got to go back to Lowe's to get another one, is I'm going to use this uh, uh, combination fitting. So I'm going to have that one like this. I'm going to have an elbow. And then I'm going to have that. So it'll basically be this transition goes straight into a drop, and then this sweep will really get a good uh, shoot going that way. And then I'm going to put a clean out on the back side here. Um, so I don't know why they had that bushing in there, probably just working with the uh, pieces they had. So in doing this, because of the size of this sweep and how I'm going to have to plumb everything in, I need to cut this uh, cast iron back. So for cutting cast iron, you can use a number of tools, but this is a sawzall with an iron cutting bit. So it's basically just a uh, grit, carbide grit on the edge of a uh, reciprocating saw blade. If we go onto the crawl space right here, you can see over here, right there, that is the main water line coming in the house. So I don't like that it goes up and across here. Even if you have pipe insulation on it, it's a problem. If you've got to run heat tape, you'll end up with it freezing. So it's a three-quarter inch line. What I'm going to do is I'm going to dig a ditch across here. I'm going to get that line, I'm going to extend it, and then have it come out through the wall in the basement. So I'm going to extend it using PEX. I'm going to go from a poly line to a PEX line, but I'm a little hesitant about doing that. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to slip the whole thing inside of three quarter inch pipe insulation just to keep the direct contact of the dirt off of it and the fittings up there. And it's dry under here, so it's not like it's going to be exposed to uh, water or anything like that. So I think it'll be fine. It is approved for underground use, so I'm going to do it. And then that means that all the water lines will then be in the basement. Pop through the wall, but the hole is, the drill bit I'm using is a three quarter bit, and I've got three quarter pipe coming through it, so it's really a little too small. I need a bigger bit, but I'm going to use this one to, from the inside, ream this out. Um, a little 
little better. I was going to dig my ditch a little deeper, but glad I didn't because I'm really only about five inches off the floor. I don't know how much deeper I would have gone, but I'm going to go ahead and drill that out a little bigger. You can also see this is where one of the drain, the drain line or one of the drain lines, major waistline for the house, went through the wall at one point. I assume where this uh, sink was plumbed into. I think I'm going to drill all this out, reestablish this drain, move the washer and dryer in here, and then use this as a drain for the washer and dryer since it's low. Um, that way I can put an outlet box right there. I could attach into the venting or just use one of the air introducing devices for the trap for that. But um, let me go ahead and stick to what I'm doing now. Get this drilled out a little more. Next up, I've got my three-quarter pecs. I've taped the end up. It's blue tape. That's why you can't see it good. But uh, that's just to keep dirt from getting inside the pipe. So I'm going to feed this through. And then I'll go in there and I'll pull it through. I'll pull it further than I need. And then I'm going to wrap the portion that's coming through this wall with this rubbery tape that I have. And that'll insulate it from any kind of abrasion or just the con uh, contact with the concrete if it has any effect on it. So that'll have, you know, tape throughout the entire area that it's drilled. Then it's just going to turn up. I'm going to have a main valve here, but I'm going to do the connection and get this pipe buried in the crawl space first. With that connection made, I can move on into the basement, and I'm going to leave this exposed for now, let them get the water turned on, make sure the connection's watertight, and then I can get everything covered up. So how cast iron pipes are put together, there's a bell side of it that's a flared out side, then there's the smaller end. So it's a flared out, then it gets smaller, 
and then each section is tucked into the next section and then lead is poured around them and that makes the seal and it's all packed in. So this was cemented shut and I want to go from PVC to this. This piece is the piece from the other side of the wall that you saw me saw off earlier. What I was going to do is tuck the PVC into this and then beat the lead back around it. I thought it was the same size but it's not the same size in this case. This is a, uh, there's different size cast iron pipe. But I remembered I had this smaller piece over there, so I've tucked that into here, hammered in as far as I can go, and then that lead is still intact around the joint from where I just removed the little piece that was broken off on the inside. It was a ring of it all the way around. So um, this is now tucked in, and I can go in there and peen that lead in with a chisel, and then that's going to create a tight seal. And then from here, I can put a fern co and adapt into PVC, which will complete the drain for the washing machine and then in, if you want to put something like a laundry sink down here. Alrighty everybody, this is where I'm going to wrap this video up. If you're still watching, I want every last one of you to hit the thumbs up button. And if you're not subscribed, hit that as well. Turn on your notifications to where you get updates when I post future videos. Check the links below, including my ebook on how I buy cheap houses and other videos that I may reference, as well as clicking those recommended videos at the end of this one. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time.